Okay, I'll ask a question I've got actually about. Um, I'll put it to you first, Gub, and then I can ask you, Ben, about habits of commissioned writers, successful commissioned writers. I mean, are there things that you see across the myriad of different personalities and, and genres that people write for the same types of things that the writers that get commissioned do that perhaps the, um, you know most other writers are not doing, or are, are there are there sort of is it a work ethic? Is it an attitude towards their um, you know their characters and it's, I'm just trying to look for a, a thread, something that writers here can I, sort of. I, I think onto. thinking of, about the the people who who've been very successful, both in terms of being published and also the way that they've received, what they share in common, and I'm talking about the McGovern's and the Abbotts and the Mellors and the you know the the um, myriad talents that we have out there who, who sort of represent the, the voices of the, of, the, of the last 10, 15 years, which is the period of time that I've been m most heavily involved with it. What they share is, is a, a capacity to, to, to approach the world with a line of surprise, to write and convert experience for themselves that isn't chasing a market or trying to um, predict what people will like. Um, in fact, most of them are <laughs> pretty disinterested in what people would like. They are, they are there fundamentally uh, exploring stories and characters that they're interested in, that they're preoccupied with, that they're, um, you know, essentially obsessed by. Um, and they carry that preoccupation through in terms of the quality of their writing. And they don't compromise. And they, they think about the, 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 as I said, they think about the concept of a television audience as sort of secondary to the primary interest, um, which is pursuing their own, you know, their own fundamental curiosity about the world. And um, I would advocate that, you know, uh, whether as a producer or whether as, 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 as um, someone operating partnership through a studio, I would advocate that to any writer as a, as a point of interest, uh, as a point of, of, of inception. Um, is if you sit down and think, what am I going to write to please the market? The probability is you're not going to get Ben's interest, you're probably not going to get my interest. I mean, it's got to come from somewhere else. And that place fundamentally is, is the conversion investment of your own experience and your own curiosity about the world and, and the individuality of not only what you have to say, but the way that you have to say it. You know, and if you do it well, it will be unique. It will, it will be impossible to turn around and say, well, that writer is just like that writer. Because amongst those writers who, who rise above the parapet, whose, whose work is ultimately acknowledged and is successful, the thing that stands out is the individuality of the writing over and over again. Ben. Oh, it's completely true. It's all about the individuality, and it's all about not second-guessing. Um, you cannot second-guess. You will not second-guess your way to a script commission or a, or a program commission. It just won't happen. Um, you can't guess your way into trends. You just have to write a piece that you're passionate about. I'd, I, I wouldn't disagree with what Gub says about audiences. I'd just say slightly differently, which is I think the most important thing is having confidence in what you want to write. Um, but I do actually think a love of television and an instinctive love of television is incredibly important as well. And that's not about thinking, oh, would the audience like it? But it's about sort of loving the audience and that being an instinctive mm. thing as you write. Because you are, you're writing for yourself, but you're communicating to an audience. Um, and you're writing on the best medium we've got, which is TV, which has the privilege of broadcasting into your front room. So I think that sort of love of TV and um, passion for it will actually make you even more individual because then you're going to push harder at the edges of it. But it's absolutely, as Gov says, it's about absolute yeah. um, individuality in the voice. That doesn't mean you have to write something, uh, you know, a story that no one's ever heard ever, but it's about the way that you tell it. Mm. Um, it's as simple as that. And, you know, I always say ideas, mm, you know, anyone can have an idea. Mm. It's not that difficult. Um, what matters is the way that you write it and the passion you have for it. You know, what's shameless? It's about a family on an estate. What's the worst idea ever? Mm. I mean, or the easiest idea ever. But it was written with just that extraordinary commitment. Mm. Um, even if you're writing something incredibly mainstream, even if you're writing a mainstream crime drama, you still have to have absolute commitment to it 
and love of that genre, but want to take that genre forward. Sorry, Ben, I, I didn't mean to interrupt you. It's just I thought that the point you were making about the love of the medium and the understanding of actual genre um, related actually to the earlier question about genre. Is, is, is there a problem with having too much genre? And um, I, thought the, I think the answer is absolutely not. And, um, you know, if you, are, if you are going to be successful in what you write, you, Ben is completely correct in saying you not only have to understand the medium, you do have to love it. And I think what's distinctive about those writers who, um, in a sense, work through television particularly, is that they, invariably they have had a lot of exposure to writing through popular media and, 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 and in particular genre. And the discipline that genre can give you, I think, is absolutely fundamental to um, achieving that freedom. Um, you know, you, you've got to recognize the value of the harness, the constraints of the harness, because often that is what liberates you. Um, when, when, um, you know, when, when Jimmy McGovern did Cracker, he had the advantage of police procedure. That idea would not have worked without police procedure. Um, everything that the, 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 the character represented was defined to some extent against the world of police procedure. You know, you sort of needed it by negative definition. And of course, fundamentally, it was a genre show, just as the mentalist is a genre show. So the point I was really making was that genre should be your friend, <laughs> rather than necessarily perceiving it as an, en an enemy of individuality. It's actually something that fundamentally in television especially liberates you.